Hey, it's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History, Living Inside of Your Aquarium. Today we are not in my aquarium at all. We are uh, visiting my buddy Chase and checking out his awesome collection of all sorts of fish. He and I share a lot of the same passions for the same kind of stuff. And so uh, I'll let him take it away here. We're going to do kind of a updated tour. We were here almost a year ago, I guess, yep, something like that. A year ago. And uh, he's upgraded some tanks seriously. He's got uh, new setups and new plants and fish and techniques. And same parrot. Oh, knows I'm talking to him. What's what's his name again? Marley. Marley, that's right. Hey, Marley. All right. So back to the fish. <laughs> so where do you want to start, man? Wherever you do. Okay. So let's. Let's start at the start of the, the room. So in here, it looks like, are these uh, crinum or onion plants or? Yep. Okay. Both. Both, all right. And then we've got, so these guys look familiar, but you've grown them out bigger than I have managed to. Do you feed these guys a bunch of times a day or Everybody anything? Everybody just gets fed once. Everybody gets fed once. And what are you feeding these? These are actually the Rainbow Tiger Endlers from Lucas Bretts. And then they're my line that I kind of selected for more blue and spade tail traits out of in the males. But these have been apart, and so I'm really interested to look at your males to compare them to mine, like just what divergent evolution does on its own. So, uh, yeah. But no, their food's varied. I mean, lots of frozen foods, lots of mysis, brine. Okay, um, yeah. Blood worms, lots of dry stuff, tetracolor, granules. Tetracolor I mean, granules. I, I yeah. vary it. They usually don't eat the same thing every day, so uh, that's kind of how I do it too. And then that's the Lucas Brett special right there. Yep. The Tetracolor granules. Everything loves those. I mean, it's even true. shrimp. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, but, for sure. And so then we've got a Shodentai puffer up here. Yep. That's his name's Kirby. Kirby. Well, he looks just like Kirby, especially like washed out under that light a little bit. Let me get a little more contrast on him. These guys have killer eyesight and they'll rotate so that they're not backed into a corner usually, but they uh, they have a cool pattern I want y'all to see. We can turn the contrast down. There you go. Look at that eye. It's like a velociraptor or something, man. They're like little hovering velociraptors. Uh, that's really cool, man. So this isn't the only puffer and uh, we'll kind of leave that as the grand finale puffer when well, we get to it. Well, there's three puffers in here. Oh, okay. So there's three puffers in here. Yeah. Are they all show dentized? No, there's a. Oh, oh, Amazon in your room. Oh, okay, right, right, yeah. Okay, so let's just start going down the stack then here. So what have we got going on in here? So this is basically just female platinum cobra firetail guppies from Dean. Okay. Here in Seattle, lots of guys, people know Dean if you know fish breeders. But yeah, he's known as the master fish breeder on Aquarium Co-op's channel. You've seen him when Dustin and I went over and uh, interviewed him, saw his spread. He's just a really talented guy in the fish club here in Seattle. And uh, I actually got some of these from Chase also, but they were in my uh, Vibrio tank that had the terrible, you know, outbreak. And so I had to, um, yeah. I had to get rid of them, unfortunately, but I had like 40 of them, dude, so. But yeah, I got these at one of the, our local fish auctions, and I've been breeding them since. Nice. That's just the females up here. Yeah, the fe well, the females are also great in that they actually have color. Yeah. And that's that's awesome. And these are only my breeding ones. I have fry tanks back in my other room. Oh, okay. Ones. And then that's my group of males. That's what the males look like, those platinums. Yeah, these males are beautiful. So mine, I didn't have uh, on an optimal omega diet with a carotene, beta carotene and omega threes like they should have been. And I found that their t their uh, their color, the the reddish orange, you know, uh, was not nearly as bright. And as soon as I up that, it's incredible, like yeah, what a difference it makes in their shimmer and everything. Those are, I mean, the, one of the most beautiful guppies I've seen. I love those. Yeah. They're just, I mean, they're they are simple in a really elegant way. Like there's a lot going on in the, the pattern, but 
it's not too much to look at from across the room. You're not like, that is a rainbow of movement, you know? And they're bred for that big triangle tail. That's yeah. That's what Dean the wanted out of them. The delta there? Yep. So, for you uh, lovers of of uh, guppies, we got you covered right here. These go for like 30 bucks a pair at Aquarium Co-op. Yeah. So they're, they're a coveted fish for sure. So let's hop over to the next uh, live live bearer tank, which would be the El Tigre Endlers. Yep, that's just a little group. I started with two. These are the select ones. I'm trying to get a little colony going. I mean, they don't breed too true right now, but these ones came from uh, Zen. Zen, yeah. Yeah, these look like his. So Aquarium Zen, he has some El Tigres, but they have three collection points in the tank, mm -hmm. and everyone has a different pattern, so they don't really breed true until you breed them out a while and, and see what, what they do. And that's what I've been do. doing. This is third generation, but the two males that I want are still in there. So that's third generation going on in there. Yep. Okay, awesome. All of the off ones made it into the big tank. Okay, so we'll see those. You guys will get a sneak peek now. But in another video, the final video of this tour, we will definitely go over the big Fajaca puffer tank. Yep. And uh, right now we're we're just chugging along on all the cool, cool smaller tanks at the moment. But these are my familiar friends. So that right there is exactly what I bred them for. Was that beautiful blue in the tail, and. Uh, is this stock lighting in this hood? No, or? It's, okay. a, it's a LED. Okay, I figured, yeah, with like... Wave point it, it for looks the grow. Wave point, what, uh, how many watts is that, do you know? Uh, I think it's 65. Okay, nice. So, that's definitely, um, that shows off the color really beautifully. And so, uh, are you breeding in the El Tigre a little bit to to like just strengthen the gene pool a bit or? No, this is just males, strictly males in here. Oh, okay, so this is all males, wow. Some of the males that I wanted to keep out of the El Tigre line that I liked are in here and sure. we'll add those in later to probably another batch out of there once I get those the way I want. This is a 10 gallon or? Yep, it's just a little 10. And so look at all the life you can keep in a 10 gallon. Plants, everything, I mean, it's just, it's great. Keep up on your water changes. It yeah. gets done twice a week and it still gets pretty moldy. 
And are these uh, like baby tears or? Uh, it's Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. So you can see. Black does rip it up. You can, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear that. Monte Carlo can definitely mimic that baby tier size though when you get the CO2 and everything correct, you know. How, how much CO2 is going in there? Um, there's usually just like one bubble a second, but right now it, the CO2 has actually been off for a week or so. I wow. With the holiday season, I haven't gotten out to the welding shop to get some more. Awesome. Well, it still all looks great, and that natural algae is great for the shrimp and the and the plecos. So you can tell that this is a well-seasoned tank that has lots of like bio, you know, life mm -hmm. in it. So it just catches your eye because they were just trying to get at one another, <laughs> you know, through the through the grate, and. Uh, I don't think it would be so peaceful right now. No. Uh, in fact, sometimes these, if, if y'all folks haven't seen these before, these are a real special treat. These are a holy grail fish, definitely, in the betta world. Uh, these are the macrostomas. Yep. And uh, we've got a male and a female. And you can see, uh, Aquarium Zen has a pair that I showed you too, and you can see how those markings, if you go back and look at that video, they they differ slightly, um, but there's kind of a general uh, three black stripe theme with the dot at the tail and the black at the end with the pink and yellow kind of sunset and then a ever so subtle, beautiful like blue on the edges. Mm -hmm. So these are really, they're like, they're like an elegant like painting and then like a bulldog of the fish you know they call macrostoma actually means big mouth and you can see as he goes after her why they get their name he can open that he looks like a big mouth bass with his mouth all the way open yeah that jaw is and hinged low that's how they breed actually he's a mouth brooder so she'll lay eggs and he'll gather them up in his mouth and hold them for the 30 days so that's cool. So when are you hoping to have them breed by? Well, she had a little fungus on her when I got her, but she's now cleared up. But she'll usually color up. She'll get two black stripes down the side of her. Uh -huh. and she's in breeding form. And then I'll let them loose at each other for a week or so. And you'll tell when he's holding, he'll look even more like a bulldog now. And then they'll get split up again. Because if you leave them, once he does have the babies, they're kind of dumb enough he'll just go right back and spawn again and while they're holding they won't eat so if he goes two months in a row without eating he can risk dying yeah and these are also a labyrinth fish correct yes. so, so they can come to the top and breathe which is kind of special garamis and uh licorice garamis uh you know blue garamis and bettas share that trait which is kind of an interesting adaptation that's when they live in like 4.0 pH water and yep. you know that coca-cola dark water um, and I was commenting earlier to chase that um, you know this That it's in, it's impressive to me that with all the leaf litter and everything that you actually do have the pinna Growing in here as well as other plants like sometimes as you get that tannin level up and the pH down it gets hard to keep plants going. I mean, with our high pH here in Seattle, I mean, all the tannins in there, it's still sitting at just over six. Six? Okay. So, I mean, it's right in their range. They, they can go a little lower. I'm pretty sure macrostomas can go from like four to four, six yep. and a half or so. But yeah, definitely. I uh, try to keep it right around six because, I mean, our tap water is seven and a half sometimes. Yeah. Depending on the season, so. Yeah, and that's a, that's like, without uh, chemically putting it down and you just add the leaf litter in that i think that's a really good point in that uh when you chemically are modifying your water rather than using natural uh leaves and tannins it's uh it's a, a gradual process that has natural buffers built in mm -hmm. whereas when you actually squeeze a bottle of concentrated chemicals of some sort in, it's like it's out of control really yeah quick. yeah really quick there goes a month's worth of and I mean, with, gradual. With a fish like that, you're not. You just yeah. want to do everything gradually. Yeah, these guys. They're really, really patient. rare in the wild. Um, they're only found in one little spot in northern Borneo. Northern Borneo is where these guys come from, huh? So, beautiful fish. Here's looking at you. <laughs> and, uh... 
So, does the female keep them in her mouth also at no, all? No, she just lays the eggs. He's the only one that he holds. He's the mouth brooder. Beautiful fish, man. Beautiful. I'll give them some lysis and you can see why they get their name. They're both All right, so we're going to get them some food and then watch them go. Uh, a little kooky, maybe? Yeah, you'll just see how big their mouth how is. How big their mouth is, yeah. Macro, as in large. Stoma is mouth. Stoma is mouth. So, yeah. And then also, I always like checking out Chase's stuff because he's got all sorts of little experience. You still got the pineapples going up there? Yep, those are from Maui. Awesome. Been ever since. Cool. So, we got some frozen... Mises, Mises. I never, I don't know how to pronounce that. Come I to think of it, Mises. Mises. Yeah. I'm probably wrong, but it's easy for me. That sounds, that sounds right. And what divider is this? I usually my dividers are useless. Like everything I've bought. Where did you find this one? I actually found it on Amazon. Amazon. Just searching for a 20 gallon long divider. I actually made my own for a while. Yeah, that's what I've been doing because like fish like this are so you know hardcore mm. at, i need to get to the other fish he doesn't even realize he has something there we go all right so guys watch his mouth here as he comes up he's gonna strike like a bass from underneath and remember too they've got really really uh impressive lateral um lateral uh, sensory organs because they live in water where they can't see sometimes you know in the in the dry season as all the tannins build up and then in the wet season it kind of uh, clears out with monsoons and things like that that come through uh, so ironically as fragile as some of these fish are in some ways they can withstand like torrential downpours that change the chemistry overnight and a lot of times that's a breeding signal. You can see just even being hungry, his head has gotten wider. Like his cheeks have puffed out. And uh, how big do these things get? They're about full grown right now. They're about full grown right They're now. A little bit bigger than that, but. So, so probably four inches, five inches? Yeah, I'd say five inches. Five inches, maximum. yeah. You'll probably get up maybe a little more in some cases, I mean. Yeah, very cool. And I see an auto sinkless, so that must get along with them. Yep, there's coolie loaches in there that get along with them too. Oh, okay. They live with loaches and stuff in their natural habitat, so it doesn't really bother them. Oh, nice. Well, that is a beautiful, beautiful fish right there. And uh, thank you for sharing that with us. So the last, or second to the last little tank, quote unquote, 20, 20 long that is. This one has another rare all right so what are we looking at Maybe down here bucket list fish but if you look down in the cave right oh there, yeah there's l46s l46 so zebra plecos there's a colony of five in that tank there's one up in wow the, in the tree a couple in the caves wow there's one up above somewhere no in the in the little tree right oh 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 yeah 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 yeah, that is awesome. This colony of five, they came from Dean. Dean traded them to Corey at Aquarium Co-op for something, and they came into the store, and Robert called me and told me, and I came and got them. Right on. So, and then are these chili rasboras or Brigitte, or what are these here? Yep, it's a whole colony of chilies. Nice. I love them. Yeah, I like, you got to get a lot of them. But you do. Otherwise, they're kind of scaredy cats. They're still a little bit flinchy, but... But they, they color up so cool. They right? do. The and, reds are amazing. And they kind of flash off and on as different males are trying to impress and yep. do little territorial things. But, man, so you've got some awesome fish. Plus, I see some sturby quarries. Yeah, that's my breeding trio of sturbys. So you guys have seen in my other videos what a breeding trio of sturbys or pandas or julii's, all sorts of quarries. It's a good way to do it. Um... Uh, and you can do all of this. He's got a betta in there. Is that a crown tail? Or, uh, or I believe he's yeah. a rescue from a bull. He's okay. In there. Oh wow, so rescue from a bull, that's always noble. 
And I'm impressed to see the <laughs> the zebra out. That's cool. They're actually, they come out, they're pretty active during the day for plecos. It's kind of odd. Yeah. You're doing something right, man. So what do you keep the specs on this tank as? Like, for water parameters on that down there? Uh, it sits right around just under 7 pH. Uh, always around 81, 82 degrees. Um, filtered through two filters right now, plus the sponge. And pretty much they get fed every night. Nice. Everything in there is pretty balanced. I mean, they get their two water changes, 25% a week, two times. And then you've got canister filters all mounted up here. Yep, and then two down there for the other two. And two down in here. Making use of space and uh, doing the, the real money effective Thing that I'm yeah, doing I mean, too. That, that's the cheap way to do it. It's very strong. Very strong. It's a good way to do it. So, uh, last tank here uh, of the smaller tanks, uh, which is nice. He's got kind of a weather station for the room all here, which gives him all the stats he needs to know. But what do we have going on here other than so that's basically like babies, quarantine, stuff okay. like that? Those are baby stirbys that I have bred out so far. So, these are recent baby stirbys and uh, they're very cute. Baby Corys, I always love to watch. They're a little bit dopey and like clumsy when they're little and mm -hmm. kind of run into each other, but they're, they're really a, a cool fish to raise. So thank you so much. This is kind of the end of part one. I want to split these up into 20-ish minute segments. So uh, we'll end this here, but we'll pick it up uh, with a preview clip here of the big tank and uh, talking just a little bit about the philosophy of what you like keeping and all that. So thanks, Chase. Is there anything else you wanted to say or? Nope. All right. So uh, yeah, guys, I just wanted to say thank you again to Chase for having me out here and showing you guys his stuff. Please uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more. And uh, I just love seeing the fish that I've had a line of or you've had a line of and then we get back together and you see a year later the minute differences in patterns and things like that so very cool there's the pleco that I gave him and so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I'll talk to you later if you want to support traveling more to see more fish rooms and things and better filming equipment uh, I also have a patreon so you can check that out take care guys bye